The manhunt continues for Abdul Shukur Ezeidi, the man who is suspected of committing a chemical attack in South London on Wednesday that injured 12 people. Let me give you the whole story. You won't believe it. It has come to light that Ezeidi entered the UK illegally in 2016, applied for asylum twice, didn't get it, but was not removed from the country. He then committed sexual assault and indecent exposure, receiving a suspended sentence. Amazingly, he was then granted asylum because of his claim that he's now a Christian, something which is being disputed. All of this prior to his alleged acid attack on two children, a mother and nine others on Wednesday. Let's get reaction from broadcaster and the former presenter of BBC Crime Watch, Sue Cook. Sue, good to see you again. Evidence, if you needed it, that our asylum system is broken. Yes, if you needed it. No, it's absolutely crazy. And I think it's happening quite a bit that uh, asylum seekers are going to priests and saying, will you vouch for me? We're going to be Christian. And will you, will you vouch for me? And then they're getting through that way. And so we've got to stop being so wishy-washy and so scared about being accused of being racist and do something concrete about it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be emotional. It just has to be realistic. And it's crazy. He was actually convicted of a sexual assault. And it, because he wasn't sentenced for a long enough um, time, they, it, didn't, um, it, didn't, it meant that they could carry on and, and let him have this asylum. But, I mean, if you're convicted of anything, no matter how short or long the sentence, if you're convicted of something, you should never be given asylum. Uh, definitely. Let's bring my uh, Friday friends into this, if we can, Sue Cook. I'm delighted to have with me uh, Lewis Oakley and Madeline Grant. And, uh, Madeline, I want to ask you about this, uh, which is regarding... Uh, this sort of story, uh, the reaction, as Sue Cook just implied there in her answer, it's a national scandal, but it's not an isolated case. No, it's not. There have been numerous cases like this, including the, um, thankfully, wasn't fatal, but the bombing of the maternity hospital in Liverpool, yeah. the culprit had said that he was a Christian, and then when they were going through his belongings after, the, after he detonated the bomb and killed himself and thankfully no one else, they found a Quran and a prayer mass. And, you know, it just stands to reason that if, if people can get away with this, that they will. Um, unfortunately, it's, it has been very difficult to even talk about this up till now. Often it, we have to wait for there to be some kind of tragedy, avoidable tragedy before we can have a frank discussion. Um, because you can guarantee that if, if anyone had raised this point publicly, or indeed if they did raise it publicly, then they would have been called racist, heartless, etc. This is not the Britain I love, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, I think increasingly people are, are fed up to the back teeth with this. The idea that the mm. desires of foreign crim criminals should trump those of the law-abiding majority of UK citizens. Well, yeah, Lewis, it doesn't make sense to me that we can't easily and swiftly deport foreign criminals. Well, this is the thing, and it just adds to the Tories' problems of why could they not get on top of this? Why can they not deal with it? Because I think the, the wider thing is it damages the whole idea of immigration um, as a whole. We know in the, by the statistics, immigration is right up there on, on the top things that people are going to be voting for in this next election. So people need to feel confident in the system. People need to feel that, look, if you break our laws... Seriously, obviously, we're not going to kick anyone out for stealing a loaf of bread. But if you are seriously breaking our laws, that you go home with it, there is just that process. And I think that makes people then feel better about the idea of immigration as a whole. It will probably come down the scale. But but whilst yeah. whilst we're in this situation now, it polls such so high as a, as a topic that the British people just want to see taken care of properly. Well, they do now, Sue. Talking of law and order, the girl and boy who murdered 16-year-old Brianna Gay will be jailed until they no longer present a danger to the public. This is uh, the words of the judge in sentencing today. Jenkinson was jailed for at least 22 years, Ratcliffe for a minimum of 20. It's hard to fathom a story like this, isn't it, Sue? It is. I mean, they, they, it's rather like the Bulger case, which I remember because when I was on Crime Watch in those days. And ever since Crime Watch, is something that's worried me. Why are we wiring some children up wrongly? or they're not even being wired up at all properly. And it doesn't sound as though it's necessarily their family background. They both seem to have quite um, uh, respectable family backgrounds. But I'll tell you what I think the problem is. It's kids these days can access appalling things on their phones. And my solution would be to say that all children under 16 should have specially adapted phones that cannot access certain parts of the internet. So you can only get information and certain things and, and, and child-friendly content. I mean, I don't see that 
that's censorship. It's just, um, you, you know, you can have cig- cigarettes laws, alcohol laws, all of under 16, it's not allowed. So why don't we not allow a certain content on the internet for children? And I think children should have, until they're 16, but specially adapted phones that won't show the violent content. Because I really worry about what they're seeing. It's violent content terrible torture videos these children were watching, and sexual content, pornographic content as well. It's violent stuff, and it should, they shouldn't be. They really shouldn't be watching them. It's, well, it's a, just wiring them up all wrong. It's a brilliant idea. Mm. Uh, Sue, it's a hard question to answer, but you've uh, reported on crime for many years, including at the BBC Crime Watch programme. Does Britain feel like it's more violent and dangerous than ever? In some ways it does and in some ways it doesn't. I mean, some crime figures overall seem to be going down. But what's going up is knife crime. Uh, that's really surging. And the real worry is that it's younger people who are perpetrating knife crime. And that is something that's worried me ever since very early days on Crime Watch, the availability of really appalling knives. I mean, we, we all know we can get mum's kitchen knife out. That's one thing. But the kind of knives that these kids are buying now, and they're very easy to get, we should stop the availability of them, is those machetes and zombie knives. The Idris Elba, Elba came, came up with the really good campaign, didn't they, a couple of weeks ago. And the, the government has announced they're going to ban these zombie knives and machetes, but they haven't legally ratified it yet. What are they waiting for? Why don't they do it right now? Because people are losing their lives.